So you picked out React for your view framework, Redux for your state manager, and now you're thinking about what to use for your API access library. Now there are a couple of good choices like Redux Saga and also Redux Toolkit Query, and we're gonna take a look at both of those on this blue color coder and use them to implement this simple to-do app. So it's a pretty simple thing. You can just go in, set that things are done. You can add one. You can delete. And this is all backed up by a simple Nest.js server. You can get a list of all of the to-dos. You can go and post one to create a new to-do, put to update a to-do, and delete to delete a to-do. So we're gonna use Redux Saga to implement that first. Let's go over and check that out right now. So over in this console, we're seeing that we are running that Nest.js service. Let's go and make another console. And in there, I'm going to do yarn create and then react app. And we're gonna call this saga test and give it a template of TypeScript. All right, now I'm gonna go into that directory and I'm gonna add some dependencies. I'm gonna add Redux, React Redux, and also Redux Saga. And then I'll start it up. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna carve down this example to get started on our to-do list. And that starts over here in Saga Test. And then we'll go into app.tsx and pare this down significantly. I'm gonna remove all of that. All the CSS as well. And then I'm gonna bring in the CSS that's going to drive the UI. Pretty simple stuff, just a bunch of layout and things and fonts and whatnot. So I'm gonna start building out the API layer by creating a new folder called lib. And inside of that, api.ts. And into that, I'm gonna bring the base URL of that server, which is on port 4000. I'm also gonna bring in our interface that says what all the to-dos are. So in this case, it's got the ID, which is just a number, the text, whether it's active or not, just a database state, and then done, which tells you whether it's done or not. And then I'm gonna add a get to-dos, which is an async function that returns a promise with all the to-dos. It just basically fetches from that URL and then returns the JSON. So now let's go over and build our Redux store that's gonna make that request so we can start seeing our to-dos. So the first thing I'm gonna bring in is create store from Redux. Next thing I need to do is bring in the definition for a to-do from the API. And now we need to go make our reducer. And of course, a reducer has two arguments. The first is a state. So in that case, we're just gonna have an array of those to-dos. And then there's the action, and there's only gonna be one of them, and that's to-dos fetch succeeded. And the payload for that is going to be a array of those to-dos. Now let's go and implement on this. And it looks like GitHub Copilot has given us a nice suggestion there. All we need to do is look for that to-dos fetch succeeded. And when it happens, we just say the payload is the new set of to-dos. Great. So now we've got to go and create a store. I'm gonna do const store equals and then use create store with that reducer. And then I'm gonna export that so we can use it. Now let's go over to our app and let's start connecting that into our React app. So for that, we need a provider and we'll get that from React Redux. We're also gonna need use selector. Get that while we're there. And we'll call this to do app and then we'll create a new function called app which returns the provider with that store around that to-do app. And there we go. Last thing we need is the store. So let's go bring that in. Let's see, we're working. Okay, so it looks like nothing's blowing up. That's always a good start. Let's jump over and see how we can actually bring in a saga to go and get the to-dos for us. So we'll go back over here to the store. All right, so to get our to-dos, we first need to bring in get to-dos. And then we need to create a saga to go and get those to-dos. And now sagas are created as generator functions. So the way that we do that is we say function and we use function star to say that this is going to be a generator function. In this case, we'll call this get to-dos action. So the first thing it's gonna do is get that list of to-dos. So it's gonna say to-dos, which is an array of to-do, and then we'll yield to get to-dos. And once we've got those, then we're actually gonna do put 
which will send out a new action to the reducer to say that the fetch has succeeded with the payload of those to-dos. Of course, we got to get that. So we're going to bring in put from Redux Saga effects. We're going to need take every, so I'll bring that in as well. Now, we're going to have a bunch of these sagas. We're going to have one for getting, creating, updating, and deleting. So we're going to create a root saga that connects all of those. Again, it's going to be a generator function. We'll call it root saga. So this is going to have a bunch of different yields. And what they basically say is, OK, every time you see a to-dos fetch requested, then yield that get to-dos action. Pretty simple stuff. So we're going to have four of those effectively, and those are going to route the actions to the different sagas. So now we need to go and connect this to our store. So I'm going to go here to apply middleware. This is going to be middleware. And then I'm going to bring in create saga middleware from Redux saga core. So the first thing I need to do is create that. By just invoking create saga middleware. And then and then I'm going to apply that to the store. And the last thing I need to do is actually run that root saga. So let's go back here and say run, and then give it that root saga. And that basically initializes it, get it getting it ready to go and listen for, in this case, just to do's fetch requested. So now we need to actually go and fire off to do's fetch requested. So let's go back over here to our app.tsx file. And I'm going to bring in use dispatch, because we want to dispatch that action to request the to do's. And we're going to dispatch it from a use effect. So I'll put the use effect in our to-do app. And we'll say that we only want to run once by giving it an empty dependency array. And now we need our dispatch. So we need to say dispatch is use dispatch. And then we want to, from here, just dispatch that type. But in this case, to-do's fetch requested. And that will fire up our event, send it off, and hopefully get us some data. So now let's go and get the to-dos by just using a selector and getting the state. And now we can jump down here and do JSON stringify and give it the list of to-dos. Hey, all right, a pretty good start. Very cool. So let's put in some additional HTML. And now we're seeing some issues around the fact that to-dos is considered an any. So let's go and actually give ourselves a selector that allows us to say that this is actually an array of to-dos. So let's go back over to the store, and then I'll export a new selector. And that's just going to coerce that to be a, an array of to-dos. So let's bring that over here into our app, and then use it as a selector. All right, looks like it's happy. Let's go check our UI. And yeah, looks great. Very cool. And these are actually set to done because we clicked them before. That's awesome. So now we need to go and actually do the toggling here as well as the delete and then also the create and see how that works. So let's go back over to the library and bring in the additional API routes that we're going to need to do create, update, and delete. So we start with create to do. It takes a text string and then it returns the to do by, and all it does is just Use the same fetch, but use a post here, as well as adding on the application JSON, header type, and giving it the right body. Update does a similar sort of thing, except it does a put, and also does it on that ID. And then it just stringifies the body. And then finally, delete just calls the delete method with the given ID. And there you go. So that's good enough for all of the API access we're going to need. So let's go over here into the store and start wiring this up. So the first thing we want to do is bring in update to do's. And then I'm going to go down here and define a new update to do action. And what that's going to do is update the to do, and then it's going to put out a request to go and get the new list of to do's once that to do has been updated. Now, as you can see, everything here is the happy path. And that's actually one of the things that we start contrasting this versus uh, the RTK implementation is I'm not putting in here anything around whether it's done, whether it's pending, whether there's been an error, any of that stuff. All of that, all of this I've, that I've done so far is around the happy path and around managing how all the asynchronous uh, actions work and how they all work together, which is what Redux Saga is really good at. Okay, so let's actually wire this up into our root saga. 
All we need to do is set the right key here to update to do requested and then attach it to the update to do action like that. And now I want to actually go and be a little bit nicer about how we create these actions. So I'm going to go back over here to this dispatch. And then I'm going to go create a fetch to do's function, which just returns that structure. And that's going to be the action creator. And I'm also going to create an action for toggle to do's. This is going to take a to do and then request an update to do, but say that we want that to do done inverted. All right, so let's take those and wire it up. Let's go back over to our app and then bring that in, fetch to do's and also toggle to do. So fetch to do's is going to replace this down here. And we'll grab this whole structure, dispatch everything and bring it down into here for the on change. Where we dispatch toggle to do and then just give it the to do. All right, let's see what we do. So we go over here. Okay, looks like we're, oh yeah. All right, this is sending it off because when I hit refresh, everything sticks, which is great. All right, let's do the same thing for delete. So go back over to the store. And then the first thing we need to do is add that saga. So I'm gonna go and add a delete to do action. It's going to look for a to delete to do requested. The payload is going to be a to do. And then it's going to yield to delete to do, which we need to bring in. And again, we need to wire it into that root saga. And then fire it off. Okay. Now, one last thing we need to do is do the action creator. So I'll add that down here as remove to do. And all it's going to do is just say the type is delete to do requested and give it the payload. So let's remove to do there, save it and go back in here. Now we've got to remove to do. We just need to dispatch that. So we'll go down here. This is the to-do area. So get rid of that and put in remove to-do. Okay, let's give it a try. Let's see. Uh, I don't want to learn React anymore. Ta-da! Awesome. Cool. All right, so the last thing we need to do is add some UI to go and allow us to create a to-do. So let's go and add that down here. Cool. So it's basically a text field and then a button. So the first thing we need to do is create a use ref for that text ref. So let's do use ref and also use callback. Now that text ref is the use ref of just an HTML input element. Now we need an on add, but it has nothing to add with yet. So let's go back over to the store and we'll add a, a new action for creating a to do. It's gonna take a payload and that payload is a string. It's going to fire off to create to do, which we need to bring in. And then we need to wire it up again. So let's go back down here to the root saga. Again, we need to bring in, let's see, create to do requested. And wire that up to create to do action. Looking good. Okay, great. And the last thing we need is a, an action creator. We'll pop that down there. We'll call it add to do. And all it's going to do is just format an action with create to do requested and then the payload. Okay, let's go over here to our app and bring that in from the store, add to do. And then we need to create our on add. So on add is this going to be a callback. It's going to dispatch that add to do with the current value. And then it's going to set that current value to nothing. So let's hit save and then go in here and see if that happens. Goodbye. Add. Awesome. Very cool. Okay, great. So that's it for the Redux Saga variant. The next thing we're going to look at is the Redux Toolkit variant to see how that compares in terms of API access. So let's go over and create a new project. We'll close all this out. And we'll bring up our terminal, go back to directory. And again, I'm going to do a yarn create React app. But this time I'm going to call it a RTK test. All right, now that's all done. Let's go and add some dependencies. I'm going to add Redux again and React Redux. And then also Redux.js toolkit. That was fast. OK, let's go back over here to our RTK test and then try it out. 
All right, we're back where we started, but I think this one's gonna be a little bit faster. So we'll go back into RTK test. And again, I'm gonna pare down the app. And then go into the CSS file and update that. All right, looking good. Let's take a look at how we got. Yep, nice blank screen, awesome. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is create a new file called store.ts. And that's going to have our API provider. So I'm gonna bring in the definition for that to do. It's the same as before. And then I'm gonna bring in the imports that we need from the Redux JS toolkit. Now it is optional, so it's on query react, part of the base. So if you don't use it, you're not actually gonna pay the freight on the overhead for that. And the next thing we need to do is create that to-do API. So I'm gonna say const to-do API and then give it the create API. Now we need to start off giving it a reducer path. We'll call this to-do API. And then we need to give it a base query. And to do that, we use fetch base query. And we're just gonna give it a base URL with that local host. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is specify the different tag types that we have. And these are invalidatable entities within the system. So in this case, we just have our to-dos. And then we're gonna have a whole bunch of endpoints. And endpoints basically takes a builder and it's going to return an object that has all the endpoints in it. So example, in this case, we're gonna use get all and it's going to run query where we're gonna specify the output type, which is an array of to-dos. The query is going to be for to-dos and it's going to then provide tags saying that it's gonna get data and it's going to get the list of all the to-dos. So that's the entity that will then get invalidated and cause this to automatically refetch when we update or create or delete a to-do. It's really cool. All right, so the next thing we need to do is provide this to-do API down the chain. So go back over here to app.tsx and bring in the API provider. Again, we're gonna call this to-do app and I'm gonna create a new function called app which is then going to return that API provider, but it needs that API. So I'm gonna bring in to-do and also the to-do API from store, and then pass that down using API. All right, so now back over here in the to-do app, we need to go make that call. So I'm going to call to-do API and then use the get all query. Now this is the really cool thing about Redux Toolkit is it's actually gone and built a whole bunch of hooks for us automatically. So in this case, it knows that we've got the get all here. And so it's created a hook called use get all query, which is really neat. So let's go and do that JSON stringify trick again and see how we do. Hey, how quick was that? That was really cool. All right, so let's uh, continue on and build out our to-do list. All right, let's replace our JSON stringify with the beautiful UI. And also what's really cool, remember how we had to go and do the type coercion before? We don't have to do any of that. The Redux Toolkit is automatically maintaining our types as we go through. So let's take a look and see how we did. Hey, really neat. And it's actually got the state from the original example, which is super cool too. So let's start wiring up the ability to update it to do. So the first thing we need to do is go back to that store and then we're gonna add another endpoint. This one is going to be called update to do. And in this case, instead of using a query, it's going to use a mutation and it's going to take a to-do and return a to-do. But we still provide a query, which is gonna take that to-do. It's going to then do effectively what we're doing with the fetch stuff before, but this is actually a, a lot easier. For example, all we need to do is just specify the URL that we need and then we wanna put, and then we want that to be the body and it's automatically gonna do the JSON stringify. It's also automatically going to invalidate the tag for the to-dos list, which is going to force get all to get call, which is really great. So let's save that out, go back to the app, and then bring in the hook that was automatically generated for us. So that's the use update to do mutation. Now we've got update to do, and we can wrap that in a callback. So I'm gonna go bring in use callback from React, and then I'm gonna bring in on toggle, and that's just going to call that update to do that we got from that hook and send off that we want to update the to-do and we want to invert that done. So let's do on toggle here and we'll go over to our on change and then just call on toggle and give it the to-do. Let's see how we do. 
All right, looking pretty good. Nice, and if I refresh, looks good. Very neat. All right, let's keep going. So now I wanna be able to delete a to-do. So let's bring in another endpoint for delete to-do. Now this one's gonna be very similar to the update. So again, it's a mutation. And again, it's going to mutate on that particular ID. So it's gonna give it the URL of the to-dos with the ID. And then it's gonna have the method of delete as opposed to put for the update. And I'm just gonna send along the body, it doesn't really matter. And again, update the list of to-dos. Very cool. So let's go back over to our app. And this time we'll bring in that delete to-do. And again, wrap it in a callback. Just drop this in here. And all this is gonna do is basically just fire off that delete to-do. So let's drop it into this delete right here. And give it that to-do. Very cool, don't wanna learn D3 anymore. How about that? Okay, looks good, great, perfect. Okay, well, now we just need to go and add it. So let's go and add the UI for that and drop it down here. And we need that text ref again. So let's go bring in use ref. Cool. And now we need to go and add that mutation. And we'll call this one add to do. And again, it's gonna be a mutation. All it takes is a string. It's not gonna return it to do, but whatever, that's fine. And it's gonna give it the body of the text. And then again, invalidate the list of to-dos. So let's go back over here to app.tsx. And then we wanna bring in add to do. Cool, with that add to do mutation automatically created for us. And the last thing we need to do is make that callback. So let's pop that in here after that text ref. Very nice. So let's give it a go. Awesome, nice. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that and learned a lot about how Redux Saga and RTK Query cover kind of different things. In this case, Redux Saga is really good at doing asynchronous management of any sort, but it doesn't give you the kind of error handling and status management that RTK Query does. RTK Query is excellent at managing that, but isn't so good at managing just kind of random asynchronous tasks. So these two things are a little bit like apples and oranges when it comes to a versus, but it's also really cool just to be able to see it and play around with it like this. And I hope it helps you in your evaluation of the API access layer that you want to use. Of course, in the meantime, if you like the video, be sure to hit that like button. If you really like the video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.